Welcome to Adult YPWW Lesson 1. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is Judgment for God's People. The lesson text is coming out of Micah chapter 1 verses 2 through 16. The lesson aim. The aim of this lesson is to know how God feels about a nation that sins and his message of judgment and restoration. The memory verse. I will read the New King James Version first and then the King James Version of Micah chapter 1 verse 2. Hear all you peoples, listen, O earth, and all that is in it. Let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. The King James Version of Micah chapter 1 verse 2. Hear all ye people, hearken, O earth, and all that therein is, and let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. The introduction says, God speaks out against his people. The book of Micah is one of warning and redemption for the people of God. As we go through this book, God will speak to us in many ways. It is clear from the beginning of this prophetic book that God is speaking to his people both Israel and Judah. There are things that God said then that are relevant to us today. First, in verse 2, God is calling for the entire earth to be a witness for him. This lets us know that the very creation of God is a witness to our actions and inactions. He says, let earth and all that is in it, verses, verse 2, and God be a witness against the people of God. In essence, perhaps we have been able to live our lives undetected by people we know. Maybe they are deceived, but the entire earth and everything in it is standing witness to the things we do. As I am writing right now, it is past midnight, but I can hear birds singing outside my window. I imagine that their songs are giving God glory, and if I do not bring glory to Him, their songs of adoration are in stark contrast to my life. If the sparrow can trust God, then I must. Further, God Himself states that He too is a witness against us, the omnipresent, omnipotent one who sees and knows is a witness to our lives our church and our hearts it is impossible to refute the testimony of the almighty god not only does he see actions but also the intent of the heart hence we must live our lives knowing that there are many witnesses to all of our actions even even in the dark of night the discussion says evil cities while the emphasis of sin is most often on the individual we often miss the fact that there are sins that belong to geographical areas and to regions and nations people sin city sin nations sin all of these levels of sin bring consequences he determines that he is coming out of his place he will come down upon earth and tread on high places of the earth, and the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split like wax before the fire. This is great judgment, where the very elements of the earth are subdued by the power of God. He then proclaims that this powerful time of judgment is for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. God is saying that Jacob, the nation, has sinned. God further explains what is the transgression of Jacob. Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Thusly, the culprit of this sin are the cities of Samaria and Jerusalem. Cities sin by festering anti-God policies, corruption, and injustice. Cities such as Chicago, Detroit, Memphis, Lagos, Beijing, Johannesburg, San Francisco, Nairobi, 
Bokota, and all others must answer to God. The culture, ethos, and laws of every city, large or small, reflect where God is in the city. Cities are rife with murder, prostitution, abortion, wicked curricula in schools, broken homes, drugs, lazy politicians, no parental participation, no jobs or businesses, environmental hazards, and the list goes on and on. It is ironic that in many ways, the backward sinful nature in the cities of our world are celebrated while God mourns. The application, God mourns over the cities. The scripture is very clear when it explains how God feels about the state of cities. He says, therefore, I will wail and howl. I will go stripped and naked. I will make a wailing like the jackals and a mourning like the ostriches, for her wounds are incurable. For it is come to Judah, it is come to the gate of my people, to Jerusalem. God is grieved at the state of our cities today, just as he was over Jerusalem. People make the mistake of separating civic life from their faith. However, each city and geographic area will be responsible to the hand of God. This is why in many cities the people needlessly suffer and are under oppression. The wages of sin are rife in these cities. Impossible economic situations, sicknesses, crime, blight, and hopelessness are a result of sin. This is why God literally cried over the city of Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And that's Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Notice that Jesus said, the city was not willing to be close and under the protective hand of God. It is time that the saints of God speak in the public square in the cities where they live to allow the light of God to shine. Too many are loyal to political parties more than they are to God and righteousness. It is for this reason that our children and grandchildren suffer. We must fight for the light of God to shine in all our cities, rural and urban, in many ways. The questions for today's lesson, and you can search the scriptures on your own. Question one, how does it affect your perspective when you remember that God will be a witness and judge against you in the court of eternity? Question two, what are the evil things you see in your city? Pray against it and ask God for ways to bring light and remove it. And question three, God mourns for the city. How can you and your church show compassion in the area where you live? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.